Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. And today, wait a minute. We're drinking bourbon, but we already drank this bourbon. We just did a review of this bourbon. What's going on? Okay, we're doing science today. Okay. Which as, we are known, we are to, known do to do science yeah. on the bourbon note here. Mm -hmm. So we recently did a really positive review of this yep. Okaneden. Yep, yep. When that one was a, a recent release. Yep. And we said in that video that we'd like to order some of those staves that they make because you can buy those at you know retail the places. Spires. Or or the spires. Yeah. yeah, the spires. Yeah. And it, so, this actually has nothing to do with Okaneden. We just it, this was the inspiration for it. So yep. let's get that out of here. Let's get that out of here and let's bring in. Bam, Georgia Moon Corn Whiskey. This and is Ben's favorite. Bam, Evan Williams Black Label. And this is my favorite. So these and are backwards. Bam, some uh, we've got barrel spires. This so this is a, a um, aged in the bottle oak infused char number three piece of wood. Yeah. So basically, it's charcoal that we're going to throw in the side of this really quality whiskey here. Oh, it actually. It yeah. kind of comes off, so I wonder if that's going like, to... Which I suppose when you char a barrel, that's going to happen as yeah, well. Yeah, it's like pencil or whatever. So here's the reason we wanted to pick these two particular ones. We wanted to see what it does to an already decent bourbon. We, we actually... This but is inexpensive. Very, this is very budget, but we both really, 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 really like it. No, yep. no bourbon yet today, I promise. Just can't talk. Yeah, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> um, so this, yeah, I think I paid 11 bucks for this. And yeah. this is the 750 mil... The plastic bottle one that yep. we'll see. Is this like the Outdoorsman edition? No, that's the regular one. And then oh. we have Georgia Moon it's Moonshine. Leaking. It's apparently I don't have the cap on it properly. Yeah. So this is a corn whiskey that you're a big fan of. You are. Well, a I wouldn't fan. say I'm a big fan of. There was a story no, behind I, it. I think you're a big fan of. I didn't hate it as much as you did. And I think I said it was better than Basil Hayden. Yeah, you probably did. So the reason we also picked this one is we wanted to see what it actually does to a hot dog quiet whiskey and see a the color that it might extract from it i'm assuming there's going to be some yeah we and be so. how much of a different taste so now we've already poured they're, sample they're, bottles they're down there so this is each the science part so we have controls that will not yep. be part of the aging process that came from these exact bottles too yes. so That's this true. is the neck pour of the evan williams so let's get these spires in here oh yeah. all right time is of the essence now Boop. You said on the packaging for the spire, it's a two week. Two week process, yep. So it says it should extract all the flavor from it in two weeks. Wow, we're gonna find out. So here we go. We've got our samples ready. We've got our Evan so, Williams, uh, our corn whiskey. Set a timer for two weeks. Set a timer for two weeks. And we'll see you then. And we are back. Two weeks, multiple celebrity deaths, and one Minnesota Vikings playoff loss later. Once, here we are. I was gonna make a football joke, but I don't. I don't need to. So, <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Please don't. The the, the wound is still open. <laughs> so anyway. And I'm guessing we were. Well, I may have actually been wearing this because I wear this a lot. Yeah, I wear this a lot. I, too. I, have, I, like, find... I have four of these, and I yeah. rotate through them. So. Uh, yeah, we haven't watched the intro since we uh, recorded. Oh yeah, it, so. I have no idea what I said. We're back with science. So as we said. Previously, we purchased the stave, the oak staves for yeah. aging your own or adding age to an already aged whiskey. And that's precisely what we did. We took We said this. that two weeks later and we waited two weeks and now we have what we have. Yep, it was recommended two weeks that, that would get yeah. all the flavor out of it. So this Georgia Moon was a clear spirit and now this is what it looks like. And maybe I'll try to get a close up of that, but I should be able to zoom in. Yeah. And it's, so it's definitely taken on some color. Definitely, but I mean, very light. Like it, it does not look like a one-year bourbon. Right, and you probably can't tell the Evelyn Williams. I don't, in, in the glass, to be honest, these two on the right. So I know that we probably explained this before, but just in case you're jumping in, on the right is the control. This is Evan Williams would know before we stuck the stick in. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna give you another crack at that. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I think everyone understands. I, I think it works. 
And, and yeah, so the one on the right is just regular Evan Williams. Yeah. And the one on the left is with the stay profile in the bottle for two weeks. Yep. And and honestly, they look it looks slightly darker. Yep. And then we've got the clear one here, which is that's what Georgia Moon looked like. Yeah, which of fun. course they just saw that in the intro because sure. they did show that. Yep. In the glass, it's obviously still it's darker. It almost has a white wine color to it. It, it does. It like has... in the in the jar, it looks considerably darker, but mm -hmm. when you hold it up to a light, I guess it's almost a little yellowish. Yeah. So this started taking on color the very next day. Yes. And it hasn't gotten a whole lot darker since. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the Georgia Moon because I feel like that's going to give us the biggest contrast being a completely unaged to only having exposure to this one wood stave to see how much like, you know, percentage wise style yeah. How much of an impact it really made. And so, I was debating doing a blind, but there's no way with I mean they're different colors and it's pretty obvious which one you're drinking. Yeah, if you got this one wrong, yeah. call a doctor. Yeah. So I know how much you loved this when we did the review of it. So okay, just in high level, this is corn whiskey. We think it's hundred percent right. Hundred percent corn, no multiple, no wheat, rye, rice. It's, it's corn hot dog. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, I think it's aged like 30 days or something Age, like that. Aged? Less no, than 30 Less days. than 30 days in new uncharred barrels. Something like that. Yeah, crazy. So. And it, to be honest, it's, it's not horrible, but it's not great. I think it's corn whiskey anyway, but anyway, yeah, let's yeah, get into it. Yeah. We don't need to probably discuss too in-depth on this. Yeah. It smells like white dog. I mean, if yeah, you've it had does. it before, yeah, it has a it's particular. It's a little white lightning-y kind of thing. It's grain forward. It almost has like little tiny, it's got some sweetness, but almost like a little sugar cookie sweetness, but it's not. Yeah, well, let me go for it. That's something you want to probably sip on all day. Eighty proof. I also have a bit of a cold and it's probably affecting my taste. And I can only say I'm grateful for that because I think <laughs> it, it tastes horrible. It, it, it's not, I don't know, horrible is not the right word. Terrible, vile. Okay. Uh, it, Are those meant to be like lighter than horrible or? Well, I don't, yeah, let's, what category? Well, it's not the worst thing ever. I'm, I'm sure there are worse things. Really not much of a difference on the nose that I'm noticing. I, I definitely think that I'm under the weather enough to not be able to tell the difference, so. I'm gonna go in for this no water. Just yep. gonna raw dog it here from the last one. That's That makes sense. It absolutely changed the flavor. It took away a harshness that there's That's some... That's what I was going to say. It rounded it out a it, little bit. It did. Um, you know, it, to be honest, at 36 months or something, it could be good. And, and maybe even a year. <laughs> and the, the one little piece of wood's probably not enough. Go back and forth between the two of them after you tried this one. Because at first... Sorry to interrupt. At first... No, it's okay. I had the same thing that you had that absolutely changed it. Then we went back and forth. It's it's subtle, a very subtle change. True. I think, and some people do this, they put these in the little one gallon or two and a half gallon type barrels and do some finishing. Sure. That absolutely would affect it more. The one small piece of wood, spire. Versus just a completely unaged. Yeah. Well, so that brings us to the Evan Williams then. That'll be interesting. So let me know if you still have the... I mean, I'm seeing like a very small percentage in change. If I didn't see the color on these, excuse me, hiccup, um, I don't know that. I, you know, I think it's, I'm it's getting, there, but it's. It, these are still the same um, distillate, no doubt. I think it's made it a lot better. Like, I genuinely dislike this, and I would rather not drink this. I think it's helped a lot. And a couple of spires or something would help it out a lot. So, but yeah, I, so, so at this point I say the spire, did it affect it? Absolutely. I would say it did a little bit. I, I don't know if I'm getting quite well, as much of a change as I don't as know if are. I would say it turned it into a great whiskey. Mm -mm. It needs, it, it needs more um, of the oak influence, either time or a bigger barrel or however that works. Yeah. No, All right. Really save it. Okay. Let's get into the Evan Williams because this will be interesting. Now putting this on an already aged bourbon and see if it. We don't know the age. It's a couple of years. But Ben well, and I. Four years, I think, is what they say. Ben and I happen to be absolute fans of just basic Evan Williams. Sure. It's yeah. it's a bottom shelfer that is. 
I mean, if I'm going to go for a, a bottom shelf pour at a bar or something like that, I'm taking this over any of the, like Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, yeah. all that. We actually did a, yeah, we did a, a live budget or like the basics. Boy, coming off of this, this smells like a top tier. It is. Top shelf <laughs> whiskey. Well, that's all you have to, to do is add a new shelf below and you just moved it up or mm -hmm. wrong. Don't get anything specific other than kind of just down the middle kind of bourbon, which it is. Yeah, coming off of this, it actually tastes a little different too. I took a trip recently, a work trip, and I was in, walked into a liquor store. I actually had a really great selection and decent prices. And I, my intent was to go back and actually get something to fly home with. But for the three nights in the hotel, I actually grabbed this exact bottle. Yeah, just that tastes to... off to me today. The, I, the I basic? Want, the basic one. I wonder if it's because this is throwing it off. Hmm. All right, let me try. I mean, I would agree a little, like I'm getting a little bit of a different note. But I haven't tried this one yet, the, the aged Well, neither wood stave. Yeah, so I'm gonna go by. to that one now. Okay. It's all, it is also possible that that wood stave is, well, you haven't tried that yet. In this case, I think the wood stave made a, a bigger impact. It made it a, a tad more interesting, complex. It added some age to it. Added a little extra bite to it. It almost makes it come across as a slightly higher proof. Higher proof and maybe higher age because you've kind of speed aged it a bit. I, this, I think percentage wise in jump and how much it affected it, I think this is the, the Evan Williams was affected more than the Georgia Moon. Hmm. And again, you've got this small wood stave fighting against a completely unaged yeah. bottle of whiskey. Where this is three to four or something like that. I, I think they say and, four. And then okay. you, so you're just kind of adding on top of that. So hmm. maybe that, hmm. like the, the overwhelming taste of this being an unaged spirit is really pulling down whatever I, flavors I so. the, the yeah. oak stave added. I think so. But in this case, I think this actually definitely made a difference. So I think in both cases, it made a, a significant difference. So I have a couple of bottles at home that I'm reluctant to continue to drink because they're, I just don't love them. So I, I think I actually may order a couple of staves to yeah, see, if I can see if you can save, save a bottle. Yeah. Um, what's weird is the packaging on, we threw it away, um, said two weeks. Are you supposed to leave it in longer than that or take it out? I don't know. Because we've done now two reviews of Oak and Eden which comes with a wood stave in it, and it's been there for a while. Yeah. And they don't say anything about taking it out, and I plan on leaving it. So I, I would think you leave this, and maybe it doesn't like change it much. Yeah, at you some know. point, I think you're just going to get yeah. all you can get out of it. Yeah, exactly. But I don't think it's going to harm it to leave it in there long term. If I didn't know what I was drinking between these two, I would almost say, if you told me this was Evan Williams' black label... I could see mistaking this for like a Evan Williams 1783. A step up. It's given it a step up in that I direction. I totally agree. Yeah. So here's the question, Greg. I'm doing it. <laughs> God. This is going to be the worst blend. Yeah, so I have to tell time. you. The, and the worst part is, is the, the most yes, the whiskey most, in here is going to be the white, white dog. Yeah. And then the, the Labrador Retriever. The what? <laughs> the Labrador Retriever. Or maybe, well, the, the Golden Retriever. Oh. Yeah, this one, the Golden Retriever. <laughs> that is a little golden, isn't it? <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot of whiskey. And yes, this is a wee glen. I'm trying to cut back on my... Uh... On your drinking? So you yeah. just fill a wee well, glen up well, to the no, top? Well, no, because I, I never do this. I never fill it, like, way past the belt line. And so it feels like there's too much in here. But I may walk home with this after we're done doing the review. Mm -mm. You're not going to... Oh, God, that's awful. Unfortunately, the Georgia Moon is the prominent note. Yeah. And, um, wow. Yeah, there's nothing good about that. You know what? It, it's weird. It's, there's this flavor, and it turns to peanut. And I'm a huge fan of peanut butter and peanut, sure. and peanut shell. Somehow, this is not working. Somehow, it's because of this crap. Well, no, it's, <laughs> it's something in there is a peanut flavor, but it's, it's, it's not working just, for me. Ugh, yeah, it's just there's nothing good about that. Yeah. it's um, Incidentally, better than the Windsor Canadian on its own. I don't remember. 
Oh, well, I, you're I lucky, because I, I, I viscerally you, hated that. And I was only, like... You were like, yeah, for what it is, it's not horrible, yeah. and I thought it was just death in a glass, terrible. I, I think I just am not bothered. Like, I get it. That's a mixer, and yeah. we're misusing it by trying to drink it neat. Yeah. And so that doesn't offend me, where it seemed like that really bothered you. It was just it just tasted so bad. Yeah. But anyway, so in conclusion, I would say, yeah, the wood staves definitely did If you add have something. these two bottles... Yeah. And you're so inclined, order the wood stay from Amazon for a couple of dollars, stick it in for two weeks, and then blend them, and then hate yourself. I think I got two of them for 11 bucks or something, I want to say. Yeah. I, so, I think I'm going to order some of the wood staves. It would be awesome if they had, like, French or virgin oak. Yeah. And you only can throw because... in some Maker's Mark and see <laughs> no, what happens. No, I want to throw it at other stuff because it works so well in Maker's Mark. Right. Well, yeah, check and see what they have. I'm sure they have different kinds. I know yeah. there's uh, wood chips that you can put in your whiskey as well, and then you oh, just strain crazy. it out. Yeah. So, yeah, this is kind of fun. So if you're, if you're interested in trying this, it does make a difference. I absolutely think it makes a difference in a positive direction. Yep. But unfortunately, this one needs several years. Yeah, it's not going to probably save a terrible whiskey. Right. So don't expect to take that bottle of something that but you But I ate, think but... It, this took a tolerable whiskey that we happen to like mm -hmm. and took it up a step. Yep, for sure. And so if you have a particular bottle that you're only okay with, try it. Yes. All right. Well, this has been Science on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Till next time. See you next time.